In this module, we will demonstrate how to prepare a patient for flexible bronchoscopy by anaesthetizing the airway, discuss the relative merits of the various methods of airway anesthesia, and describe the mechanisms of action and the risks of airway anesthesia. We will also demonstrate normal upper airway anatomy as it is encountered during flexible bronchoscopy. Here is a patient being prepared for bronchoscopy. Telemetry, blood pressure and pulse oximeter monitors are already in place. We recommend that you wear protective gown, gloves and a face mask when performing bronchoscopy and when numbing the airway, as respiratory secretions may be aerosolized during these procedures. Lidocaine is the main drug used for airway preparation. Its action as a local anaesthetic numbs the airway and reduces cough. The choice of methods used for topical anaesthesia is a matter of provider preference. We will demonstrate the techniques commonly employed in the UWMC bronchoscopy suite. Before getting started, warn the patient that lidocaine has a very bitter taste. The patient is asked to gargle lidocaine for a minute. During that time, he will need to breathe by closing his mouth and breathing through his nose. He then spits out the lidocaine. At Harborview, a dose of nebulized lidocaine is given before the gargle. An atomizer is then used to apply lidocaine to the oropharynx. The patient is asked to stick out his tongue but it may be necessary to use a tongue depressor or to hold the tongue with a piece of gauze to get the tip of the atomizer to the back of the throat. The contents of the atomizer should be given in approximately one milliliter aliquots, slowly progressing through the oropharynx into the hypopharynx. This can take five to 10 minutes. If a patient cannot gargle well or long enough, then oropharyngeal anesthesia is achieved using the nebulizer or the atomizer. Lidocaine is also a class 1b antiarrhythmic. It is rapidly absorbed by mucous membranes with peak serum concentrations occurring 20 to 30 minutes after the initial application. Toxic serum levels can cause circumoral paresthesias, seizures, and arrhythmias. Guidelines suggest 8 mg per kilogram as the maximum topical dose. However, the absorption and metabolism of lidocaine is very variable, and so the lowest possible dose should be used. While the upper airway is anesthetized, the patient is at risk for aspiration so patients should avoid eating or drinking for two hours after the last dose of lidocaine. The flexible bronchoscope may be inserted through either the mouth or the nose. If inserting through the mouth, a bite block must be used to prevent the patient from biting the bronchoscope. This will cause thousands of dollars in damage if the fiber optics are damaged. If inserting through the nose, the bronchoscopist first decides which nair seems the most patent by asking the patient, using a sniff test, or by examining inside the nose. It is best to avoid the side with a septal deflection, as this represents a fixed narrowing of the nasal passageway. The chosen nair is then anaesthetized with cotton swabs that are dipped in lidocaine jelly or soaked in liquid cocaine solution. Cocaine acts as both a local anaesthetic and a vasoconstrictor. As such, it is the ideal drug for topical application intranasally to numb sensation, reduce the risk of epistaxis, and ease the passage of the bronchoscope. Some providers do not use topical cocaine due to reports of myocardial infarction occurring with its use, but it is routinely applied at UWMC and the VA. Remember when inserting the cotton swabs that the nasal airway passage is perpendicular to the face. Gently insert the cotton swab until you feel resistance from the posterior wall of the nasal passage. A gentle twisting motion can help with insertion. More lidocaine will be applied to the airway through the bronchoscope during bronchoscopy as it is needed to control cough. Lidocaine jelly is applied to the end of the bronchoscope as a lubricant to aid passage through the upper airway. Be careful not to get the jelly on the bronchoscope lens. Here are the different methods of topical airway anesthesia. In the bronchoscopy suite, your assistant will typically prepare a set of these for you. When performing a bronch, out of hours or on the floor, you may need to prepare these yourself. You should calculate the total permissible dose of lidocaine for your patient according to their body weight. At UWMC and Harborview, we allow a total dose of 8 mg per kilogram, but this should be reduced for patients with liver impairment, CHF or advanced age. You should plan how much lidocaine to give by each of these methods. Typically, we give 50 mg as a gargle, that is 2.5 ml of 2% solution, followed by 100 to 200 mg in the atomizer, that is 10 ml of 1 or 2% solution. 
Nebulized lidocaine can also be used. Typically, it is given prior to the gargle and atomizer. 3 milliliters of 1, 2, or 4% lidocaine solution can be used. This is 60, 120, or 240 milligrams of lidocaine. It takes 5 to 7 minutes to administer the nebulizer. Cocaine or lidocaine jelly is applied to the nair using cotton swabs. Typically, we try to insert a total of four cotton swabs, one or two at a time. Five milliliters of 2% lidocaine jelly contains 100 milligrams. This is used to apply to the nair via cotton swabs and to the end of the bronchoscope. The syringes each contain 20 milligrams, that is one milliliter of 2% lidocaine to be given through the bronchoscope. The plunger is pulled out so that the rest of the syringe is filled with air to ensure that the lidocaine passes through the working channel when the dose is given. Let's do a calculation for the average 70 kilogram man. He would receive 50 milligrams as a gargle, 200 milligrams in the atomizer, 100 milligrams as lidocaine jelly. This is a total of 350 milligrams prior to starting bronchoscopy and leaves a total of 210 milligrams or 10 bolus doses available to be given during the procedure to reach a maximum dose of 560 milligrams, which is eight milligrams per kilogram. The total dose of lidocaine given should be recorded in the bronchoscopy note. You can see the bronchoscope being inserted into the right nair. The bronchoscope is pointing directly perpendicular to the face. The bronchoscope must navigate the nasopharynx traveling parallel to the inferior turbinate. It passes over the hard and then the soft palate into the oropharynx and then posterior to the epiglottis into the hypopharynx before entering the trachea between the vocal cords. The scope will generally pass through the nose more smoothly if you keep your thumb on the control lever, but don't direct the scope too much. Usually the tip will follow the correct path on its own, much like placing an NG tube. Once past the turbinate, the bronchoscope must gently flex cordially and pass through the nasopharynx into the oropharynx remaining posterior to the tongue. If there is difficulty navigating the oropharynx, ask your assistant to extend the patient's neck or perform a jaw thrust as these maneuvers lift the tongue away from the posterior wall of the oropharynx. The bronchoscope must then pass posterior to the epiglottis, where you see the vocal cords, the piriform fossa, the vestibular fold, and the trachea. When passing through the folds, it is ideal to time advancement of the scope with breathing such that the vocal cords are as far apart as possible when the scope is advanced through. To avoid post-procedure hoarseness from trauma to the vocal cords, try to pass through the vocal folds towards the posterior aspect of the glottis. Additional lidocaine is applied to the vocal cords through the working channel of the bronchoscope prior to inserting the bronchoscope through the folds. Most providers try to get at least two or three doses on the cords before passing through. The bronchoscopist should hold the bronchoscope as straight as possible. To summarize, good upper airway anesthesia can be achieved by a variety of methods and takes patience but will result in an easier bronchoscopy by reducing gag and cough. When passing the bronchoscope through the upper airway, be gentle, and if vision is poor, follow the black. Remember to keep the total lidocaine dose to a maximum of 8 milligrams per kilogram.